today I will be teaching you guys everything you need to know about buffing in Elden Ring. This is basically buffing 101. So let's get started right now. First thing to start off with is what exactly is a buff. A buff is basically a ability or an advantage that is usually temporarily gained, but depending on how it's used can be gained over a long period of time. So let's actually start with temporary buffs. So there's actually two types of buffs. There, there is non-temporary and temporary buffs. Temporary buffs usually are buffs that don't override other buffs when they're applied. These include weapons, shields, talismans, and great runes. There is six different types of different weapon buffs in Elden Ring. There is the weapon, the shield, the body, the aura, the health, and the stamina regeneration. All six of these buffs can be applied at once and some of them do indeed consider to be non-temporary. Weapon buffs usually depend on your type of build. Many buffs are going to actually depend on your different types of builds. And in this case, for a weapon buff, I would say that although I don't have any on hand, the Royal Knight's Resolve is an excellent start. Now, the Royal Knight's Resolve basically increases your attack power, but it's temporary and it is a weapon buff because it is because when you use the weapon buff, it is exclusive to that weapon in the sense that when you're using it, you have the weapon out at all times for the buff to be activated. So as soon as you swap to a different weapon from the one that you were using that buff, it will go away. Same thing goes for shield buffs, such as the Contagious Fury we have here with a really good shield. The Jellyfish shield at plus 10, although weapon level doesn't matter for Ash of War, con has the Ash of War of Contagious Fury, which incites the Jellyfish warmth and allows its fury to flow through you. Raises attack power for a certain duration. It is 30 seconds, but we're going to get into this in just a bit. So, body type of buffs are usually buffs that increase your resistances. Um, I actually have on my Invigorating Cured Meat, which temporarily boosts robustness, but Invigorating Cured Meat is better than regular Cured Meat. It's better than regular meat because it actually lasts longer. As you guys can see, higher robustness might help... Really? Okay, never mind. It's higher robustness. I'm going to mix up with something else, but... Then we have Aura. So for Aura, there is a few ways you can equip Aura buffs. The Golden Vow, which we're going to be getting into in just a bit, is an excellent example. But the Rallying Standard is another one of its class, which I deem to be better in certain situations. So now, Health Regen actually refers to a few physics I have here. When it comes to health regeneration, the Crimson Burst Crystal tier is excellent for that. And for stamina regeneration, we have the Green Burst Crystal tier, where they both temporarily recover something over time. So HP steadily restores your health over time, and, and Green Burst temporarily boosts your stamina recovery over time. So that's pretty good. Effects can be overridden if they are used in the same category. These, even if they are different buffs, it doesn't matter. If they aren't one of the temporary buffs or a unique buff, which we're going to get to in a bit here, then they are not going to, then they are going to get overridden. Also, I am going to be including talismans, but that's going to be later in the video. Buffs can usually be stacked, such as the rallying standard, which buffs you by 20% extra damage, along with 20% extra negation, and it also is an aura to everyone that's around you while you use this spell. Or, no, this is a buff ability. It's a unique buff. And it lasts for 30 seconds. And if we were also to use the Contagious Fury, we would get an extra 20% attack boost that also lasts for 30 seconds. So overall, it's going to be a pretty good combination. It doesn't matter which one of these you do first, since again, they do last for the same amount of time. But let's get into that. What is the order that you should buff? So the two types of buffs I usually see are Magic using sorcery and incantation which is miracle so since my character's Arani, obviously i'm going to be using magic um clear, honestly the one major drawback um spells if you're gonna if you're running more of a faith character so say you're gonna be using a miracle character then golden vow divine lord's fortification sacred oath and holy ground are going to be a good amount of spells that you can use to buff yourself up. As a matter of fact, that's actually pretty good. Um, when it comes to land spells, we're going to get to that because they're unique. However, what we're going to do first 
is talk about my usual order and the general order you should use your buffs in. So when you use buffs, the first thing you need to consider is what exactly you want to buff first. So I like to use green spill and green burst for that stamina and health recovery. However, if we're running a sort of mage or comet azure type build, then I would highly recommend using the magic shrouding crack tier and the cerulean hidden tier. That way we get the supercharge. So the order that you would use buffs in is depending on the time. The more time a buff usually has, so the order that you should use your buffs in is determined by the amount of time that they have. Generally, the longer a buff is, the more likely you're going to want to use that one first so that it'll last longer than the ones that are very short. So, since my rallying standard here lasts for 30 seconds, and my Wondrous Flask of Physic with its Cerulean Crystal tier only lasts for 10 seconds, it makes sense that I would want to use my Cerulean Flask last, as that is only going to last for 10 seconds, and if you're using Comet Azure, you already know how long that takes to build up and actually shoot, so obviously you want to use that one last. And there really is no real like way with category that's going to affect or cancel out usually, as long as you stay to what this video is telling you. Also, if you guys decide to stack the Contagious Fury with the Rallying Standard, which we're going to be doing in this video, that's going to give you an extra 40% attack bonus, which is absolutely insane when we decide to use our magic, which I am going to be using the Lusat Staff, which again, Lusat Staff enhances all powers of sorcery, even though it is consuming additional FP, but that doesn't matter, since again, we are going to be having a Cerulean Crystal tier on. So you guys can see how passives and buffs kind of are weaving into the, each other. Overall, it's very important to keep in mind. Also, I think I should mention this, but if you guys have on the, let's find her, the Old Lord's Talisman, then your spell buffs, keep in mind, spell buffs, sorceries and, sorceries and incantations, not Ashes of War, will be extended in a bit longer. This can be very important to note depending on how long it takes for some spells to get buffed, depending on how long a spell will be. However, most times out of 10, it's probably not going to affect it too much, but it is good to have. Now that we've gotten that, I've gotten that out of the way, there's one last thing I want to show us before we actually begin, and that is headset buffs. So I know I don't got too much on this character in specific, even though I should, but the mushroom head actually boosts your resistances to many different types of status ailments, and that can be very helpful as a buff, especially if you're trying to make your way through certain areas like the Scarlet Rot Swamp of Aconia, I don't know if I'm saying that right, or any poison pools that might be in caves. So that's important to note too. Really quickly, let's get out the way of what is a temporary buff and what is a non-temporary buff. So non-temporary buffs, like I've said before, weapons, shields, great runes, and talismans, as you guys can see up there. I actually have on the Urtree's Favor and the Great Char's Arsenal, which we're going to get into those later. But just as you guys can see, they are up on the screen right now underneath my stamina bar. They are the permanent buffs, the non-temporary. However, say if I were to use my Contagious Fury, you guys are going to see that sword icon with the up arrow appear. However, do you notice what's different about it? No, not only that's a temporary buff, yeah, but also, but also that it is diamond, which stands for it being a temporary buff. And this is important to note. Also, what I really like about the um, <laughs> jellyfish shield here is that it turns red to indicate that the buff is activated. And I find that detail really cool. So, Golden Vow versus the Rallying Standard. So, let's actually make our way over to Sight of Grace. I'm going to show you guys the Golden Vow Ash of War and why Golden Vow probably is better than the Rallying Standard, but also why it I'm going to pick out my Light Dagger and I'm going to apply the. There it is, the Golden Vow Ash of War to it. So there is two types of golden vows in the game. There's the Ash War version and there's the spell incantation version. The Ash War version makes your attack power go up by 12.5% and makes your damage negation go up by 7.5% and it lasts for 45 seconds. Actually that's not too bad especially since you don't need any type of stat requirement for it except for what the dagger has which is usually generally very low. And it's giving you really good buffs for such a light piece of equipment, especially since you can switch it out. However, when we take a look at the incantation, incantation requires 25 faith to use, 
and it does 15% more damage and has a damage negation of 10% and if I'm not mistaken it lasts for I believe 85 seconds. Both not weighing down the player unlike the rallying standard. Or actually no, this is called the commander standard but the rallying standard is the unique weapon, unique ability that is on this weapon. The rallying standard boosts your damage by 20% and it boosts your damage negation by 20% as well while lasting for 30 seconds. Now overall that's almost 25% more than Golden Val which overall is a lot better. However what makes it, uh, however what gives it such a disadvantage is number one it's weight and number two it's only applicable on the rallying standard or no the commander standard halberd so it is going to be weighing you quite a bit down unless you're going to be doing quality and strength build and it's worth knowing that it doesn't last as long as either golden valves however what is great about it is that it's a unique ability which means that we can actually use the ability first and then take it off not while still keeping the buff so even if we unequip the halberd we're still going to keep the buff for the 30 seconds which is great also since they're both aura buffs even though golden vow can be applied as an incantation instead of a ash of war you might think that can't we use golden vow and um rallying standard but unfortunately you cannot do this which is weird because they're both even though it's a unique buff it should count but since they're both auras, they do cancel out, unfortunately. Unique buffs are buffs that you can use without having to worry about other buffs being canceled out. Such as Rallying Standard with the Contagious Fury, which I've already said many times in this video. Chris Flask of Physic is another type of unique ability or unique buff that has many different kinds of combinations, including the single stat, crystal tiers, the hard tiers, the cerulean hidden tier, and the windy tier, they just go on for a long time, but there are so many different combinations. And not to forget, and not to forget the ruptured crystal tier as well. When it comes to land buffs, like I mentioned before, Terra Magica basically puts this huge sigil on the ground, and whenever you stand in it, it basically boosts your magic damage for everyone that stands within it as long as you're all allied. The same thing would go for Holy Ground, which not only heals you, but also boosts your Holy Damage by 10%, which clearly makes it better for Faith Bills. But let's get into Perfumes. So the two types of buffing perfumes in the game that I highly recommend is the Blood Boil Aromatic and the Uplifting Aromatic. The Uplifting Aromatic gives you the same type of effect that the, that the Opaline Bubble Tier gives you, where it allows you to take one hit without taking any damage. And yes, this does apply to all of your allies that stand around you as well, along with upping your attack power by 20%, I believe. That's really good, as you can also use that on your Spirit Ash summons as well. And, however, I have tried to play around and use this with the opening Bubble Tier as well to see if we can get like a double type of defense where we negate two hits going, but unfortunately that just didn't happen. Not to, because we could still stack our buffs since these are unique buffs. You can stack both the Uplifting and Blood Oil Aromatic, which is going to give you double attack power. And, not to mention that the Blood Oil Aromatic not only ups your attack power, but also increases your stamina, along with making you take more damage in return. So let's get into these debuffs right now. There's plenty of debuffs to go over, but I'm going to go over the most common. Of course, Blood Oil Aromatic has your defense going down, but if you decide to combo, but if you decide to combo that with the Rallying Standard, that's going to allow you to basically cancel out your defense um, down defense up type of buff, which is great. But there also is one other huge debuff that you get from nuzzling your face into Fia's taco over at the round table. Of course, everyone would do this. Of course, everyone would do this. We have no shame. But did you guys know that that debuff symbol is actually going to stay there, which is lowering your health by, I believe, 5%? unless you use your Belichin's Blessing. And the Belichin Blessing basically gives you a buff of more poise for 15 seconds. Overall, it's sort of worth it. If you're going up against enemies that are using light attacks like R1s, it'll do you good when maybe you're surrounded by a few enemies. But other than that, I would say Hyper Armor from a Great Sword is a better buy. And lastly, we will move on to Talismans. We will first start with Radigan's Sword Seal and Merica's Sword Seal. So Radigan's Sword Seal's Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dex by 5 levels, giving you a total of 20 levels in return. Now those are the physical stats, while Marika's Sorcio boosts your more 
mental, spiritual stats, being your intelligence, your mind, your faith, and your arcane by five each. So that is another 20 levels. If you equip both of these, you're going to get 40 extra levels. However, each source heal makes you take 15% extra damage, meaning if you have both of these equipped, sure, you're going to get those extra 40 levels, but you're also going to be taking 30% more extra damage, which isn't worth it. So what you can do instead, a way better alternative that isn't wasting any of your talisman slots, is equip Godric's Great Rune. Godric's Great Rune has the same exact effect of giving all of your attributes 5 extra stats, boosting you up by 40 extra levels, as long as the Great Rune is activated until you die. Which is a way better buy. But now let's move on to the Thap Ring of Elden Ring being the Urtree's Favor plus 2. The Urtree's Favor basically boosts your health, stamina, and equipment load. Overall, you can see the permanent squares up on the top left hand corner of the screen. It's great to have. But we can also talk about the Great Shards Arsenal as well here, the Havel's Ring of Elden Ring, which greatly boosts your equipment load. Again, a great buff to have. The Graven Mess and Faithful Canvas Talisman both greatly increase your potency of sorceries and miracles. So overall, it's great to have if you're doing those types of... And then we have the Red Feather Talisman, which we are going to show off here. We're going to be using one of Godric's soldiers as our guinea pig. Now, of course, the Red Feather's Talisman is, ba is basically the Red Tearstone Ring of Dark Souls, or in this case of Elden Ring. And when we get to low health, under 25%, we're going to get an extra attack power increase. And you can also use Verays, which I believe has the same effect as well, of giving us 10% extra damage when our health is low, which is great too. But we don't have the White Mask on this character. The weather does matter for different types of attack power. If it's raining, fire damage does 10% less damage, while lightning damage does 10% more, which is really cool to keep in mind. Especially if you're going to be going to Rhea Lucaria to do PvP at soul level 120. Here we got the Godric's men, we got all buffed up except for the physic. And we're gonna see right here. Oh my god, look at the damage! That's almost 850 damage from just a single measly gold stone pebble. And of course, here it is without any buffs, too. But there you go, that is buffing 101 in Elden Ring. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video and did learn something. My goal here was to help you guys understand all the buffs in Elden Ring because I feel like there's a lot more to go over and I want to try to skim the best of it. And also be sure to subscribe to the notification bell along with hitting me up on your email notification so you guys don't miss when my next videos drop. Especially the 50, especially the 50 tips and tricks in Elden Ring. You're definitely going to want to stay tuned for that. And make sure to join my Discord server. All the boys playing Elden Ring over there. Follow my other socials in the description below. Use my coupon code Ren creates to save 3% at ALA.com to get whatever types of buffs you need for Elden Ring. And not to mention the grand opening of the merch store, baby. Go grab yourself some stuff. Oh, the merch there too. Of course, yours can be way better, higher quality than this because this was a test. Still, if you want to support me outright, great way to do it. T-shirts are about $30, there, but trust me, they're worth it because... Because all of it goes towards supporting the channel and the content I make. So instead of doing supers, please buy a t-shirt and stand proud. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to share this video with anyone that has the same questions about buffing. And until next time, rise my fellow Tarnished and buff up your Elden Ring. Oh yeah, buy a t-shirt.